This is the first time that we have more people over the age of 65 than under the age of 15. We need to find ways to keep people in the community as well and supported for as long as possible. The older I get, I want to stay as active as I can, so I walk. I have to go to the hospital once a week, if not more. Sometimes I, I just can't, so I usually take a, a taxi. Dave was a healthy man. He worked all the time. He never sat still. And then on December the 8th, he had a stroke. Well, he can't talk. He can't walk. The right side is paralyzed. Changed my life big time. But you know, we had a good life. Now we just have a different life. Fatigue is a very common effect of stroke on people. And then you find other cognitive things that you, you don't do well. It really uh, is a hit for your, uh, your confidence as well. Losing a driver's license is really a difficult transition for many people and can be quite isolating. If I can explore different transportation options before it's necessary for me to give up my driver's license. I didn't want to be dependent on my wife or calling up my son or somebody to drive me. I very much wanted to live independently. So if I wanted to go someplace, I would find out how to get there by bus. There needs to be a menu of choices. I know that complexity is expensive, but you're not actually going to be able to support people unless you give people a menu of choices. I think there's sometimes, at a policymaker level, an assumption that there are options for people, that we have buses and sky trains and we have handy dart. So why do we need to invest in seniors' transportation when we have something? It's not working for everybody and it's not a one-size-fits-all.